Hi guys, I'm going to have another go with this nanocopter tail rotor and the supercapacitor. See if we can get it to fly a plane. This one, the plane that it's in at the moment, works but it's very unstable. So I've been looking on YouTube at people's FPV deltas and you won't be able to see this. I'll put a link in the video description to the guy that I'm copying this off. He's actually got this design. It's a very simple design. It works on a single sheet of 30 by 20 foam board but I'm going to scale it down to the size that you see here, A4 sheet of paper, simply by changing the inches measurements to centimetre measurements. So it's this basic data delta shape. I won't need to cut out quite such a large section from there because he was using an 8 inch propeller and I'm going to be using that propeller. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Make it like that. It uses a KF airfoil, as it's called, which is basically a flat sheet of foam and then a strip of foam on top of it to give it a sort of an airfoil shape. And I'm going to make it out of my polystyrene pizza trays. Now none of those are quite big enough so I either scale it down a bit more or I make it in two sections. I'll make it the A4 size so it'll be two sections for each wing. So we'll start off with the ordinary pizza tray. flat section, we don't need the curved edges. We need two of them to start with. While I was waiting for the hot glue gun to warm up, I've cut out the airfoil sections as they call them. The KF airfoil. And that's all it's going to give us is a ridge on the top and then we smooth down the front. But you leave the step. Right, we need to hot glue this wing together. I've just run some clear sticky tape down the back. That's nothing to do with strength at this point in time. It's just so that I can fold it like that, put the glue down there, and put it flat on my table, and it won't stick to the table. to 
trim the front or the leading edge to give us a nice curve. I suppose I could trim the trailing edge. That's where the flaps would be on the radio controlled version. I have no intention of making this radio controlled. So I might just trim them down a bit. Need to cut out the space for the motor as well. Need the end plates for the wings. I'll use my styrofoam plates for that I think. I'll be a bit lighter. I've rubbed down the leading edge there. So you can see we've got a bit of an airfoil shape. Also rubbed down the bottom of the elevators, flaps. So we need to stick the end plates on. Got the motor in place, supercapacitor. The centre of gravity is supposed to be seven inches back from the front, well in this case seven centimetres, so I've marked, probably doesn't even show there, a little black mark there, black mark there, so it should balance there. It's a bit tail heavy at the moment, but I want to add a little bit of a, a fuselage there, something I can get hold of with my fingers to throw it, because on the radio controlled version you probably do a discus launch as they call it, throw it from one side so your hands don't get cut by the propeller holding it in the middle. But with this tiny little motor that's hardly going to be a problem. So I want something that I can grip underneath. There we are. Something I can get hold of so that I can throw it. I've also got a convenient place to put a bit of blue tack to give us the nose weight to get the Centre of gravity right. Ready to go outside and test fly it. Before I do, I'll just cover off some points that have come back on the previous episode, because this is the second episode trying to use the tail rotor from a nanocopter. The reason I'm doing this is I just want to see if I can get anything to fly with this small motor. Now, if we just compare it to the power up, that motor there is probably about effectively twice the size. And the motor I use on most of my planes when I use these supercapacitors is probably twice the size of that one. So this series is all about just trying to use this really tiny motor to fly a plane. So don't bother telling me it might fly if you put a bigger motor on it. That's not what this series is about. This series is about using the smallest motor I've got. It did just about fly this plane which is significantly smaller, but this was very unstable. And I just wondered whether if I made one that had a decent airfoil shape to it, it might manage. This feels very heavy compared to this, but it does have an airfoil shape. So we'll see what happens. It's probably getting just a little bit too breezy, too windy for it now. Same as with the power up, you do need your batteries to be absolutely fresh because as soon as they start to go off you're not getting the top speed out of the motor.
I think that'll do. So a quick summary. Tail rotor off a nanocopter, which is tiny. Super capacitor, that's actually bigger than I wanted. I wanted a smaller one. The one in the power-up is quite a bit smaller than that, so less weight. The plane itself, have a look in the video description, I'll give you a link to where I copied this from. I've made a scaled down version of somebody else's radio controlled FPV Delta. And it just about manages a level flight. Whether it do any better in a bigger area, so it can build up a bit of speed, I don't know. But I think that more or less uh, proves it, it almost works. I think if I do another one, it'll have to be with lighter foam, because this foam is quite heavy. But I think it looks quite good. So, we'll call that one a success borderline success. It does give us just about level flight. It's not climbing, but it's staying more or less level. Maybe there'll be a version 3.